Hello, Danny. Good afternoon. Can you hear me well? Yes. Very good. Okay. How are you today, Danny? Mm, I'm good. Thanks. Great. Okay. So, do you have any plans after our class? Mm. No, I don't. Nice. Okay. So, how's the weather in your place right now? I think it's so hot. Oh, yeah. Same here in my place. It is indeed hot. Okay. So, how's the temperatures? Because here in my place, it's 36 degrees Celsius. What about in your place? 36. Wow. Uh, I think now is mm, 31. 31. So my place is hotter than your place. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Danny, today we will just have to read all the things. And these are the sample answers to all my questions last week, if you can remember. So we're going to play it together. You will read A and I'll be B. Then I'm going to ask you question two. Okay, so is there any difference in cell phone usage between young people and old ones? Um, most, most, peop most old people speak very loudly into their phone and repeat themselves often. I get they don't release how sensitive the news mic microphone are, so they think they have to strongly project their void in order to be heard. I can overlook this because of their age, but I sure do find it annoying. Very good. Thank you for reading. Okay, I want you to say realize. Realize. Very good. And we also have here, we youngsters have grown up with cell phones. They are quite simply part of our life experience. We just take it for granted that someone we're with will be engaged in a conversation with someone else, even while talking with us, and we don't see anything odd about it. It's nothing unusual, and it certainly isn't rude. We all do it. Okay, now I want you to look at the sample answers in here, um, Danny. Is there any words here that is not familiar for you? Uh, mm. Um. Uh, the Grand, I don't think the word. I don't know the word. Which word? Um. Realize. Realize. Very good. Okay, so when we realize something, that's the time that we came to reflect what we did. For example, okay, I shouted at my brother early in the morning because I was being late from, uh, I was being late with my class and he was so slow in taking a shower. Then later on the day, I came to realize that what I did to my brother was wrong. So it's like I was uh, reflecting what I did to my brother and I just realized that it was wrong uh, do you have any idea now what the mean what's the meaning of realized I don't have any idea okay so in here another example I came to I came to realize that I didn't give the definition of realize to you. I only made an example. So in here, when we say realize, 
This is when you are becoming fully aware of something as a matter of fact. And you are understanding it clearly. Okay, example. I realize that I made a mistake early in the morning. Like that. Or another example. I just realized that I've used a wrong material for my student yesterday. It's like you are becoming aware now that what you did was wrong yesterday like that is that clear now yeah. do you understand the meaning of realize now yes great okay what other words here danny mm -hmm. No. What about take it for granted? Grant. Pardon? Yeah. Do you understand the phrase take it for granted? No. Okay, so when we say if you're taking it for granted, okay, that means you are thinking that everything will always happen. For example, okay, you learning English, you are just taking it for granted because you think that you will learn English every day. Like that, you, you don't realize that um, the older you get, the less interest you have in learning English. Like that. So that is only an example. Another example of taking someone for granted. It's like, I really don't like going to the party because they are taking for, they are just taking me for granted. That means they always expect that if they invite me into the party, I would always show up. So it's like they don't value my presence. Yeah, that's another example of taking for granted. So the definition of take, take something for granted is you are going to expect that something will always happen. Is that clear now? Yes. Great. Okay. So here, let's continue. What is the proper etiquette in using a cell phone in public? We can't help being cold, and we shouldn't be prohibited. Yeah, prohibited. Prohibit, prohibited from calling someone else, but we should be considerate of the people around us as much as possible. We should speak quietly and briefly, and we should try to isolate ourselves from other people as much as possible. Very good. And there's another sample answer. Actually, I don't think we should ever use our phones someplace where we will bother others. We can text our messages to anyone with a cell phone privately and cheaply, so there is no need to spend a lot of money to irritate someone else. Okay, so here, what are the words? Tell me all the words in here, Denny, that you don't know. Mm. Prohibit and uh, prohibit uh, considerate and isolate very good so we have considerate isolate and prohibited isolate. okay i want you to say isolate isolate okay so when we say that something is prohibited that means something is forbidden forbidden means it's not allowed for example 
smoking is prohibited to young. Uh, oh, no. Smoking is prohibited to teenagers. That means smoking is not allowed to teenagers. That is prohibited. Okay. And we have here considerate. So when we are a considerate person, we are thinking about the feelings and needs of other people. Yes, for example, she's very considerate to my feelings because she gave me lunch even though that I didn't tell her that I was hungry. Like that. Or you can also say, my teacher is very considerate. She always try her best to explain the lesson in an easy way. Like that. That is considerate. Okay, and we have here isolate. When we isolate ourselves, that's mean, I, that means we're going to separate from other people or to move into a place where most of the people aren't uh, located. For example, you have to isolate yourself when you are positive in COVID so that other people won't get the flu that you have or they won't be contaminated by the virus. That is isolate. Yeah, you're going to move from one place. Okay, so what else, Danny? Any other words? Oh, um, uh, behind there was someone. Which one is it? Irritate. Ah, this one, irritate. Yeah. Okay, so when we irritate someone, we are annoying them. And when they are irritated, okay, they are annoyed by us or they are becoming mad. For example, my sister always irritates me when I have a class. Okay, so she is bothering me. And it makes me mad. That is irritate. Yes. Okay. Now, how about here? Can you think of going a day without a cell phone? Oh, uh, well, I also forget my completely and leave it at home. Maybe I don't get many calls. So I don't miss. So I don't miss this. But if people have anything important to tell me, they just leave a message, messages, and it get, and I get it when I get home. Very good. And we have here, go a day without my phone. I can't imagine going five minutes without it. How could I stay in contact with my friends if I didn't have my cell phone? It's not like we're always in the same room together all the time. We all have separate busy lives, but we still need to be in touch with each other. Okay, so how about here? Is there any word that you don't know in here? I think this is easy, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so number four, the age of children having their own cell phones is constantly going down. Why is that? Young kids need to be in touch with their parents and friends, the same as others do. The cost of cell phones is cost constantly getting smaller. So why should young people be deprived of this right? Yes. Okay, so when we say deprived, that means you are not having the things that are essential for a comfortable life. Example, I am deprived of using the computer because I didn't do my homework and my mom was so sad. I was so mad like that. 
That means you are not getting the things that are essential to have a comfortable life. Even though that the computer doesn't make our life comfortable, it just entertains us and it makes our life convenient. That is deprived. Okay, and here, the main reason is that our society is becoming increasingly silly. When we are when we're poor, when we were poor, we knew better than to waste our time and resources on unnecessary things. But now, as a society, we have far more money than we need, and we spend most of it foolishly. As a result, we are spoiling our kids by giving them whatever they want, simply because they want it, or because all their friends have it, or because some pop singer sports won. These days, kids tell their parents what to do instead of the, of the other way around. Oh yeah, this is so right. I definitely agree with this answer. Yes. Okay. So how about in here, Danny? Is there any word? Um, uh, foolish. Foolishly. Foolish. All right. So when we say foolishly, this is an adverb that we use, okay, to describe someone who is doing stupid things. Okay, for example, he foolishly buy things that he doesn't need. Like that. So if you do if you buy things that you don't need, you are acting stupid. Because why would you buy something that, first of all, you don't need it like that? That's foolishly. Another example, she is foolishly in love with him, even though that the guy doesn't love her. So that in that way, okay, she is very stupid for loving a guy that doesn't love her back. Is that clear? Yes. Great. Okay, so is there any other words? Um, silly. Silly. Okay, so we describe someone silly if they are behaving badly or crazily. For example, my sister is very silly when there are new people in the house. Okay, so she's being um, a little crazy, but not to the point that she is a psycho. No, she's just behaving naughtily. Like she's just being naughty, behaving badly. That is silly. Yes. Or we can also say that someone is, behave someone is silly because they lack common sense. Yeah, for example, oh, I've used the wrong material yesterday. Silly me. That means I lack sense yesterday. Yes. Okay. So what else, do, Danny? Uh, Nothing no. else? All right. So here... What do you think about buying cell phone for your own young kids? I don't see anything wrong with it. Sometimes I need to contact with to contact them. And sometimes they need to get in touch with me. Sometimes the occasions are very important. Although I Admit that sometimes they are trying to all, but we are social beings, and we need to talk to our friend and family on a regular, cross custom basis. However, I would limit my my kids' phones 
you okay. usage uses by uh, allowing them only one phone card per month that way they will be in in call in contact yeah to be have responsibly great thank you so much for reading i want you to listen and say behave behave encourage encourage constant basis constant basis trivial trivial great okay so what are your thoughts on this one do you agree with this person yes or no yes yes me too i would i agree with this one because you are loving your kids but we are also considering in disciplining them okay now here when we say trivial i think you don't know this so trivial are the unimportant things or things that has little value just like here, cell phones are sometimes trivial. That means cell phones are sometimes unimportant. Not important. So trivial means it's not important and it has little value to our life. Like that. Okay, so what else? I think that's it. Is there any word here, Danny, that you don't know? Mm. No. Not, nothing else. Nothing okay, else. now here's here's my, my sample answer. What do you mean by young? If a kid is old enough to behave in a mature way, I see nothing wrong with her having one of the great inventions of our time. Since we're going to buy our kids presents in any event for their birthdays or whatever, then what's wrong with getting them something that they want to have but is also very useful besides? That's better than getting them something that will quickly lose its appropriateness. Oh yeah, this person also has some point. <laughs> yes. Okay, so here, do you know the word besides appropriateness and mature? Um, I don't know the word mature and appropriate. This one, you can say appropriateness. Appropriateness. Very good. So first we have here mature. Okay, we say that someone's mature if they are thinking um, in a critical way. They're not behaving like a child. Okay, mature is a person who thinks like a grown-up. And most of the grown-ups are mature. That means... They, I don't know how to say it. It's like they're not behaving like a kid. And if someone is behaving like a kid, then that's what we call immature. Like this. Okay, you are an immature if you are behaving like a kid. And you're not growing up. You are immature. But if you are mature, then you are a fully grown a person okay now next we have here appropriateness all right appropriate means it is suitable for example okay this material is appropriate for your level that means it is suitable for your level that one that is appropriate okay so any more 
Nothing else. Great. Okay, now let's look at, oh, there are so many questions. <sighs> okay, so let's just go through with it. What age do you think is appropriate for a person to have a cell phone? I think that an out of kids become more independent and are away from our goals, supervision. More and more, they should have a phone. That way we can kill thoughts on them. But also they would know that they can always contact us if they need help. Very good. And here I have no objection to anyone having a phone of his own as long as he buys it himself and is responsible for paying all the bills. What I object to is giving young people an excuse to be irresponsible, running up a large expense for something, and then expecting their parents to foot the bill. Oh, yeah, this is so right. Okay, so let's define the words here. So first we have supervision. Do you know this one, Danny? Mm -hmm. No. No? Or yes? Yes. No. Great. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so supervision is a noun. Okay, when you are under this, when you are under supervision, that means you are um under guidance or you are under someone's um eyes. They are observing you. Okay, for example, my parent is supervising me. That means they are they are looking after me and i am under their observation okay this is also the same thing with supervise it's like you are in charge of a person okay and you're going to check that they are behaving very good or not for example Danny, you are under supervision of your parents. Okay, then your parents will observe whether you are um, studying hard or not. It's like they are looking after you like that. Okay, and we also have here keep tabs on. When we say keep tabs on, we are watching somebody carefully to see what the person does example i don't like keeping tabs on another people that means i don't like to watch other people especially on how they live their life like that so in other words when you keep tabs on someone you are spying them Yes. Okay. And we have here objection. So when we say objection, just like I have no objection, that means I'm not against with it. An example, I have no objection of you using a computer to play some games during your summer vacation because it's summer. And you have the right to play. That means I'm not against it. All right. So what else here? We also have running up. Do you know what is running up, Danny? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Running up a large expense for something. So this is actually a appraisal verb. When we say that someone's running up, that means it is increasingly. Okay, running up a large expense. So the expenses are increasing. It's becoming 2 million Vietnamese dong, like that. And we have here their parents to foot the bill. So, and then they're expecting their parents to pay the bill. It's not a literal, literal foot. No. Okay, so in here, we can say pay. 
Hey, Danny, could you put the bill after we eat? That means I'm asking you to pay the bill after we eat. Put the bill. Like that. That is also an idiomatic expression. Put the bill. Okay, now how about here? What are the bad side effects of camera phones? There are no bad side effects. I just love sharing my life with my friends. We can now take, take each other pictures anytime we want. No matter we, where we are, we will save some of the pictures to the rest of lives. To remember the fun time we used to help, but even of the one we don't save, just the act of sharing the experience together was a very valuable thing. Very good. Okay, say valuable thing. Valuable thing. thing. Very good. Okay, and in here, the misuse of the camera phone is becoming more serious every day in lots of ways. In addition to being caught in potentially embarrassing situations, we also find out that criminals are taking pictures of our credit cards or IDs and using them to gain access to our bank accounts or perform other illegal acts. We need to do something to protect ourselves. Okay, so Denny, I think all of these are quite easy. So is there any word here that is not familiar for you? No. No, very good. Okay, now do you have an ID? Like this ID? one? Um, yes. Very good. What kind of ID do you have, Danny? Mm -hmm. Number. Yeah, and I'm I'm not asking for your um ID number. Like what kind? What type of ID do you have? Do you have school ID, passport, driver's yeah. license? Mm -hmm. I have the. Social ID. Social ID. Very good. So that is an ID that tells you that you are a citizen in Vietnam. Right? Very good. Okay. And you have to be very careful with your ID. Don't just give it to anyone. And of course, though, if they ask for the details of your ID, you don't have to give them. Especially if that is a stranger. Because they could use it against you in illegal ways okay so now let's move on with here let's have a conversation okay so you will be the female and i will be the man how has the advent of the cell phone changed people's lives um i just read an old science fiction story about shorty shorty in which all its members were in constant contact with one another. The process was not described, but it sure rem reminded me a lot of our own world and our re reliance on the on cell phone. How old is that story? I don't know exact, exactly, but maybe 50 or 60 years. That's pretty amazing. We weren't even born then. But there was a pretty disturbing access that I can't stop thinking about. That does? Well, first, there were abs absolutely no privacy. Everybody was 
talking of being talk to all the time. No one could do anything without the rest of the world knowing all about it. And if there was some sort of technological problem, or if someone were being punished by being demi assessed, the sense of isolation would be a wood dry hair incense. That could be a serious problem. Sometimes we need to be alone just to think about our situation and what to do about it. I know, but it grew worse than that. The government always knew when the people were and what they were doing as the we, we should. They live in an extremely oppressive police state. Yes, I think it would be easy to plant a tracking device in a cell phone. That's a very scary thought. And as part of the process, the government were perpetually sending out its own propaganda to the phones. No one ever had any way to avoid it, so it was easy to brainwash and control the population. Yikes. Maybe I should start thinking about leaving my phone at home from now on. Okay, thank you so much for reading. There are some words that you mispronounce, so let's uh, look at them. Listen and repeat after me. Society. Society. Reminded. Reminded. Very good. Punished. Punished. Denied access. Denied access. Result. 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 Very. Result. <laughs> Here, result. result. Very good. Okay, so here I know there are so many words here that are new to you. Okay, so let's take a look at each of them. So we have here first, oppressive police state. Do you know that one? Oh, yes, yeah, I know. You know? Oh, wow. Very good. How about perpetually? Mm, no, I don't know. All right. So when we say that it is perpetually existing, that means it continues all the time. Just like in here. As part of the process, the government was perpetually sending out its own propaganda. So they are still, um, they are continuing. Uh, they continue to send out its own propaganda. Okay, how about propaganda? Do you know that? No. No. Okay, propaganda is an information that a government puts out in order to influence people's opinion and beliefs like that and when we say brainwash they are forcing someone to accept a particular set of beliefs for example you believe in honesty is the best policy then some people would tell you that you know what it's okay to tell lies it's not all the time that we have to be honest so in that way they are brainwashing you to believe what they believe that is brainwash. Okay. So, Danny, do you have any question? No. Oh, by the way, Danny, I have a concern. Do you have any plans for, to for tomorrow? No. Okay. Yeah, because on June 8th, I will be absent because my sister is getting married.